you can buy an Adventure Force Villainator for $20. How many times have you heard that phrase? If you're like me, the answer is yes. Ah, yes, the fabled Villainator. The blaster that really got a lot of attention, like a ridiculous amount of attention. Like so much attention that people still bring it up to this day. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, people still say, yes, the Villainator is better than this blaster, that blaster, that blaster, and that blaster, and that blaster combined. Which is quite the bold and a half claim to make because this is just a $20 blaster. And it wasn't trying to be super revolutionary. It was just like, hi, here's a Thompson machine gun $20 blaster that we give you a 40 round drum with and has slam fire. They did the same thing back with the Magnum. And yet this one got way more attention than that blaster did. So let's start off by listing everything you get with the Adventure Force Villainator. You get one Adventure Force Villainator. You get one Adventure Force Villainator drum that you can buy separately. Uh, that, yeah, you can do that. And you get a stock that kind of looks like the Lightning Storm stock, but in a Hobbit version. And the first thing you guys are probably thinking is, Okay, well you have a sailor, but you obviously broke it to get it out because in your big 100 subscriber special, you can see the blaster fully assembled in it as a cylinder in it. So how come it's sitting with you right now? Everybody knows that their cylinders can't come out. This one can come out. No problems at all. You just pull it. It's also worth noting really quickly that this is not a Nerf stock. This was the original Adventure Force stock design that I think they patented, but the and they only use it twice. They use it with this one and they use it with the Spectrum. And it works pretty stably actually, but it isn't compatible with Nerf stocks, sad. And then to put the cylinder in, you, you, you take this part, you pull it up until it clicks, you flip it over, you take that part and you pull it until it clicks. And then you just line up those tabs with the two little holes in there. I gotta do this off camera. And once it's aligned, you just shove it until it snaps and there you go. Bingo, bango, bongo, you can take that out with just as much effort as you used to put it in. So let's start off with the ergonomics. This grip is almost good, but it isn't. Let me explain why. You see this finger choil thing for your pinky finger? Yeah, that is, that is way more annoying than you think it is because both of these fingers are like smushed together like that, but then your pinky finger has all this real estate space and it just is confusing and weird to hold. I'm not used to it. You'd probably get used to it over time, but I'm not used to it at all. Now the same thing almost goes with the foregrip, except it does have four finger toils. So even though it is kind of small, it does feel a lot more pleasant on your hands. I don't understand why this is so uncomfortable. It might just be a me problem, but I do not like this grip at all. The stock that's included is, is very, very short. I mean, come on, dart zone, you're better than this, but it is pretty comfortable. It's smooth and filleted on the back and the top gives you a cheek rest question mark to put your face on even though it is very thin and small so it does feel a little bit uncomfortable on your face so how does this blaster work well it's pretty self-explanatory you pull it back you pull it forward and then you shoot it does not have an air restrictor this is loud every time I, I don't know it doesn't have any air restrictor of course it's gonna be loud and it also has slam fire so is actually damaging to my ear. I have sensitive ears and that is painful. It also has a detail that I actually really like. It has this tiny little flip up iron sight in the front. There, there is no need to do that. It doesn't have any rear iron sight. Wait, actually it does. I never noticed that. Wow, I never actually noticed that until I just filmed this. <laughs> but it does have an iron sight then I guess. So that is technically useful, especially because it runs along the entire back of the blaster. So you do have quite a bit of distance to aim through. I'm, I'm genuinely surprised. Now we gotta talk about the design. Probably my favorite part of this blaster. It looks really cool. And not for the same way that a lot of other blasters look. Because think about like the Zuru Crusher. That thing looks cool because it's meant to be outlandish and super industrial. This thing looks like a legitimate Thompson machine gun. It looks very realistic. And when it comes to looking realistic, it looks great. And uh, one last note before the firing demo, this blaster is very durable. Need proof? Yay! The drum's still in the blaster. And that is actually a test that I do with every blaster. I, I always throw it down the stairs at least once just to make sure that the physical quality is going to be durable, which it is. Now let's shoot it. Oh, uh, before I actually get to the firing demo, I have a sad confession to make. I, I don't think I can show the slam fire because uh, there's, a, there's an issue it has. 
Observe, when I flip it over, there is no dart seal at all. And like, seriously, no dart seal. If I shake it a little bit, look how many darts just fall right out. That, that's not good. At genuinely, when I try to do the slam fire, it shakes the blaster enough to push the darts forwards to make it jam. So I'm going to try, I'm going to shoot 20 darts normally and then try to slam fire off the other 20 shots but I can't guarantee that it's gonna work. So we'll address this more in my opinion. Surprisingly, it actually worked. Now, well, uh, let's talk about that problem. So, this is... Ow! <laughs> this blaster... This blast... This blaster could have easily been the best Springer that I own, except for the one problem. This cylinder that it comes with does not have a dart fit on almost half of the barrels. So, not only do a lot of the darts just fall out with minimal effort, but even if they don't fall out, usually they don't fire very well, making this more consistent than the Elite 2.0 Shockwave. Seriously. Now this is a problem I've had since launch, but I will say that when it does work, it works very effectively. So most of the shots go about in the mid 80s, sometimes high 70s, but some of these shots can even go upwards to the 90s and even a couple times the slow 100s, which is a really big deal for a stock class $20 dart blaster that holds 40 shots. I mean, come on, that's a lot of real estate. And even with the problems that I've addressed, you can get extra cylinders. So it might just be the fact that my cylinder is a lemon and I need to get a new cylinder or something. But it is a problem. It does happen with the cylinder that I have, so I'm addressing it nonetheless. And quite frankly, I mean, having a $40 of uh, I mean a 40 shot $20 blaster like this, that's already a big deal and it only gets better when you consider the Tomahawk 60, which holds 60 and is $30. I mean, that's $10 per 20 shots. That is a ridiculous value. And so realistically, every complaint that I've said so far can be diffused by saying that it is just the cylinder and the cylinder can be replaced. The biggest problem with things like the shockwave are the fact that once you put the cylinder in, it's not coming out unless you find a way to disassemble a blaster. Good luck with that. This one, you can disassemble it if you need to. The cylinder pops right out. You can buy extra cylinders and if you you have a problem with the cylinder, you can fix it yourself because it is a detachable part. I mean, come on. This is a good value. It's $20. So, for the burning question, would I recommend an Adventure Force Villainator? Not if you have sensitive ears. It's really painful. But for everybody else, absolutely. This thing is very, very good. It just has a couple little issues that can hopefully be fixed in the future. But with all that said, if you would like to purchase one of these blasters, I will try to link one in the description. I don't know if they're on Amazon, but if they are, there will be a link in the description. With that said, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're new, like if you enjoyed, and comment down below on a scale of one to 10, how much do you think that hurt my foot? And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.